G'day guys, Quinn here from Cubicle Free. Today I just wanted to talk to you about breaking out of the nine to five, getting rid of the grind and doing whatever you want in life. And I bring you to this beautiful spot which is called Doggy Beach here in Noosa. And basically people bring their dogs here and it's an off leash area where dogs can just go nuts and run around. And it's an awesome spot for families as well as a excellent swimming area uh, and I'll, I'll show you that a little bit in a moment but in this video I really wanted to share with you the three times that I have broken free of the daily grind the nine to five because I think they're really helpful for different people at different stages of their lives and different risk tolerances I've sort of done the extreme thing where you just quit and go and start something from scratch with very little savings behind you to now where I'm actually breaking free of the not really the grind in the sense that I'm working for someone else but definitely the grind in the sense that I've found myself in a situation where I just yeah want to shake it up I want to be do things exciting again and, and I've got a I've got a family now and and responsibilities financially so I can't just go and do what I do, have done in the past. So I sort of want to give you some perspective and I want to share these three stories with you on how I broke free and in, in each case it's completely different. So the first time I basically was 23. I had no responsibilities at all but I did, I had worked as an engineer. I studied really hard and I got a job uh, in my profession and basically found myself in a situation just two years into working where I was like yeah I just can't do this I just I could see how I was going to work my way up in the company I already had a company car you know I was making reasonable money but I was just it just wasn't for me I was just like I I'm not going to play this game. I've got so much more. There's so much more in life that I want to, I want to do, and I didn't really have a plan. So I ended up just traveling, and I ended up going over to. I was living in Australia at the time, and ended up going to Canada, and from there I went to America and down into Central America, and I spent oh, many months and and many years in in the end traveling and working not definitely not working in the grind I was working in hospitality and restaurants and funny enough making more money as a waiter than I was as an engineer and I just was having a great time and I ended up working over in the UK I finished a wildcat project down in Costa Rica where I was introducing wildcats back in the jungle and completely ran out of money and decided to go and work in the UK. And from there I became a recruitment consultant and I learned how to basically put other people into the nine to five, <laughs> which is kind of ironic. And meantime, I was learning how to, to do business, how to speak with clients, how to sell, how to uh, essentially run a business. and when I finished that job and moved back to Australia, and I was 30 by this point, so I'd been traveling for about seven years, uh, I had to basically quit the nine to five again. So I'd been working in recruitment for about three years and working for someone else. And when I came back to Australia, at this point, I had a, a serious girlfriend who turned into my wife later on and yeah I just at, at the age of 30 I just felt a lot more serious about you know getting things happening financially I didn't have much money at all I think I'd saved 20,000 pounds which was about $50,000 Australian and I spent half of it on a little convertible sports car instead of doing anything responsible with it but uh, I always knew that things would work out and 
at that age you sort of don't you know things aren't critical but it felt really critical for me at that point I think now in my 50s I realize how easy I, I had it and how good I had it but at, at the time I get it you know you, even when I was 23 it was it was a struggle to leave that that nine to five because I'd worked so hard to to get into this profession and and I'd I'd gotten everything that was I guess seen as six, what people think of as being successful you know I had the the manager title and the all that that sort of stuff but the reality was I just it just it wasn't going to work for me I could I couldn't see myself in that future reality and that pretty much happened to me again at age 30 and my solution at that time was to start my own business and at that time I could see the opportunity in my what I had been doing which was as a recruitment consultant and I think um, one of the best things I, I did was to essentially use the experience that I had there and turn that into an online business and what I did was when I moved back to Australia from the UK was basically help people to get work in the UK uh, which was kind of what I'd been doing in the UK but I could see the opportunity of actually being here on the ground in Australia and making it easy for employers in the UK to find people that were overseas but also making it easy for the candidates that were looking for an opportunity to perhaps work in something a little bit more exciting and something a little bit different overseas, get paid a little bit more perhaps, um, but also just work on great projects. I was working with engineers, so uh, one of the things that engineers love more than money is to just work on the best projects. And I, I could offer that, that to them by working in the UK. So, but I think the lesson here for potentially for other people is really if you're looking to break out of the nine to five is to find the opportunities that you've got in terms of your experience and your skills and apply that to a business. And it might be through consulting, um, it might be through coaching, or perhaps through you know, a business where you can facilitate some part of it. Um, freelancing, freelancing is also an excellent option because you can essentially start working for yourself but you are getting paid more potentially just to do the same job working back for the same employer. So I used to do that a lot in recruitment. We would help people who were working in permanent jobs to work on contract and essentially they were doing the same work but perhaps they were working less hours uh, which would enable them to do another side hustle and they were you know then able to just live a better life because they were more flexible with their time and uh, more able to do whatever they they wanted to do but also to do their job and quite often you know what you'll find what I've found is that you actually are more productive when you're working less hours and you're working from home it might sound challenging at first but honestly when you're at home and you're like okay I've got a few hours to do a little bit of work now and I've just got to get it done. You don't muck around with your time. You just get it done and then you've got more free time to do whatever you want. So, you know, today's a work day. Everybody's heading to work. It's probably around nine o'clock right now. And here I am having a chat to you on the beach. I've already had a 10K or a six mile run on, along the beach and a swim and now I'm doing my side hustle. This is my third breaking free from the grind. I currently earn all my income from affiliate income. I'm a content marketer, they call it. I have been for over 10 years now, and that's how I earn my income. I, I make money quite passively. I've got other investments now that are also form part of the passive picture, but you know, if I had a job, and I was starting again, something like this would be a great option. If I didn't want to do the, the freelance route or the consulting route or, you know, I mean, there's many different ways to 
to, uh, to make money from a side hustle. And I guess the key is to not spend too much money to try and do this side hustle, to not spend too much of your precious time. So you've really got to look towards your skills and what's, you know, what do you want to offer to the world and what, you know, what's, what's your passions and what are your, what are your skills that nobody else can really offer? And, you know, for me, for example, I feel like I've got all this experience of actually living cubicle free to, of escaping the cubicle. And I really want to, to give that back to, to others. I want other people to be able to experience that. I want someone like myself to have spoken to me in the past and to be able to really help with some of the technicalities, some of the, the mindset issues, because I think a lot of it is mindset. Let's just talk about that for a moment. At the moment, I'm doing meditations every morning, thinking about myself as a competent YouTuber. And I know I'm kind of pretty crap at the moment. <laughs> I'm, I'm really trying, guys. But I'm, honestly, I've been stuck working for myself, not really talking to people very much. And just that's part of the reason what I'm, what I'm trying to do is to break out of that and to be more expressive and to be more connected with others and to help others. And yeah, I hope you found this helpful, guys. Please leave your comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Where are you at in your journey of breaking free of the nine to five? Thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you again soon. Cheers.